Hello, welcome to something a little bit different. Um, I've started seeing that a lot of people in Victoria are getting evicted. Uh, so I wanted to do a series of videos on, you know, what's the correct process? What are the legal requirements that have to be undertaken? What you can do, um, what you should look out for um, and all that kind of stuff. The problem is there's a lot of reasons why you can be evicted. Um, so uh, this video is going to focus on being evicted for renovations, for example, um, and most of this information will be specific to that reason. However, if you've had a notice to vacate or um, you're in an eviction process or something like that, let me know what reason was provided to you and I'll try and make a video on it. So as I said, a lot of this information is going to be specific to getting evicted because for renovations. Um, however, there is some information that will be general and apply to everything. Um, it's always important to get some legal advice um, or just you know reach out to Tenants Vic or the Renters and Housing Union, whoever you need to reach out to. Um, but yeah, so here's what you need to look out for. So generally speaking, in Victoria, if you get evicted, you need to be provided with something called a notice to vacate and it's in a prescribed form uh, and it looks something like this. So that's the first thing to look out for. If, you, if it doesn't look like this, something's probably up, though there are, there are some reasons why it can be something else. So section 91ZX of the Residential Tenancies Act in 1997, you know this is gonna be super interesting, refers to the right of a residential rental provider to give a renter a notice to vacate, i.e evict them for the purpose of repair or renovation or reconstruction of the building. There's a few requirements under this section of the Act. Um, first of all, it can't occur before the end of your fixed term agreement. So you can't, you can't get a notice to vacate that is effective before your lease ends. It also requires the landlord to have obtained all the necessary permits and consents to carry out the work. We'll go into that a bit more in a bit more detail shortly. Um, and it requires that the renter not be able to be in the building while they do the repairs and such and such. They also have to give you a minimum notice period of 60 days. The act also requires under section 91 ZZO that the form of the notice to vacate must be prescribed. It has to look like this. It has to be addressed to the renter or the renters. It needs to be signed by the person giving the notice. So that can be the landlord or the agent. And it needs to explain the reasons for giving the notice. Um, and it also needs to include in this example, documentary evidence. There are some VCAT cases where, for example, there was a spelling mistake in the renter's name and VCAT has been pretty lenient saying that, yeah, it's still, we still consider it to be addressed to the renter, so that may not work if you're trying to challenge this, but it also might be worth it, so it's worth talking to someone about that. It's also important to know that the notice of AK can't just be left in your letterbox. They have to either mail it to you by registered mail, or if your lease agreement says that you've agreed to emailed notices, they need to email it to you. So you can't just leave it in your letterbox or leave it at your doorstep. It can be served to you in person, that's also fine, just can't be left somewhere and then expect you to see it. The prescribed form of the notice to vacate is in the Residential Tenancies Regulations 2021, which is separate to the Act. Um, if you don't know it, look it up. There's some interesting stuff in there. It's really not that interesting, but I find it interesting. And the form starts on page 102. So once you've checked everything matches up, your notice to vacate is the same as the form. Um, have a look at the documentary evidence provided. So they are required to attach documentary evidence to show that, hey, we are doing these renovations and you have to leave the premises because we can't do it while you're in there. Section 486A of the Residential Tenancies Act allows the Director of Consumer Affairs Victoria to just kind of say what they need um, with respect to uh, documentary evidence. So um, the Director of Consumer Affairs actually has published uh, what evidence they require if you're getting evicted for renovations. And you can find that in the Victorian
Victoria Government Gazette number S142 dated Thursday 25 March 2021. Have fun googling that. It pretty much says that in the event that you're giving a notice to vacate for the reason repairs or renovation the landlord can do a few things here um, so they can pursue one of two options the first option being that they need to provide photos that the repairs are required so like proof that a repair is necessary whether that's like a picture of the asbestos or a picture of the the thing that's wrong pretty much and in in addition to that, they need to provide a contract with or a quotation from a suitably qualified tradesperson for carrying out planned repairs. And in that contract or quotation needs to state the nature of the repairs, as well as why the renter needs to be vacated um, in order to carry out the repairs, as well as how long they reckon it's gonna take. So they can do either that, and we'll go back to that in a sec, or they can provide uh, the building permit for repairs or renovation, which means it's pretty much like a council thing. They're like, yep, we've got a contract, we've got a bunch of stuff, um, it's been approved, blah, 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 blah. You can check with your local council if they have that. Um, usually they don't go that route because it requires a lot of extra stuff and they have to have already made some payments and blah, 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 blah. So they usually don't do that. Um, sometimes they do, just call your council, see if they've got a building permit. If they don't, they need to provide the photographs and the contract or quotation or whatever. Often they don't provide the quote or the contract in the notice to vacate, which is a reason uh, to challenge the notice or uh, to consider it invalid. Some things to look out for, it does say here that, the con that in the contract or the quotation it needs to refer to the nature of the repairs, um, the reason why it needs to be vacant and the length of time. I've seen some where those aren't included in the contract or the quotation, they've just included it in the notice to vacate. So um, I haven't seen a VCAT case about that, but that might be worth a challenge if you do see that. Um, also, it says it needs to be a suitably qualified tradesperson. So if you get a notice to vacate and the contract or the quote is uh, with, say, say for example, your place has asbestos and in the quote it refers to asbestos removal. Um, there are a number of registers in Victoria where you can check that that tradesperson is licensed um, to remove asbestos for example. You can check the ABN in the contract or the quote, um, check which person that business is registered to and then check if they're licensed. Um, if the quote or the contract refers to electrical work or gas work or plumbing you can check uh, either the Victorian Building Authority um, their registered tradespeople or you can check with Energy Safe Victoria as to whether these people are licensed um, if you get a quote for example from a handyman service and the total amount of the quote is over or quote or contract is over ten thousand um, dollars then the handyman needs to be registered uh, with the Victorian Building Authority. Section 24B um, of, the, of the Building Act 1993 says that, hey, if the total amount of works is over a prescribed amount, then they need to be registered with the Building Authority. And then Section 36B of the Building Regulations 2018 says the prescribed amount is $10,000. If your notice to vacate doesn't include any of those things it may be invalid um, so it is worth calling Consumer Affairs Victoria and then saying hey I think I'm being illegally evicted and they'll tell you the requirements um, whether or not those your notice meets those requirements um, sometimes they'll talk you tell you to talk to Tenants Vic so give that a go um, also, you may be able to talk to a community legal centre in your area, so also give that a shot. Generally speaking, the property managers who organise these notice to, notices to vacate are pretty useless and often they don't meet the requirements under the legislation. Uh, so look at it carefully, uh, consider your options and don't be afraid to let them know that you don't think this is correct. Um, and push back. Sorry that this video isn't very funny, um, but I guess it is talking about a pretty serious topic, uh, people losing their homes. So um, 
maybe the next one will be a bit more funny but if you could comment down below whether you've received a notice to vacate and which section of the act they're getting you to vacate for um, that'd be great I'll make a video on it on what to look out for uh, and what you can do in that event um, it's also important to know that if you get a notice to vacate generally you should challenge that within 30 days of receiving the notice um, so and the first step to do that give consumer affairs victoria a call say i think i'm getting illegally evicted um, and yeah i hope your day gets better